Welcome back to Bud Light Hawk Talk, final segment of this week's episode. Thanks again to Ice Hawks head coach Ted Den and Matthew Baudouin joining us in the first two segments. Our final guest is newcomer to the Ice Hawks, the newest Ice Hawk defenseman, Kevin Quick. Let's give a good round of applause for Kevin Quick. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Rockford. Thanks for having me. No problem. Uh, I guess the first question that is everyone on everyone's mind here for the Ice Hogs fans is what kind of game do you bring to the Ice Hogs as a defenseman uh, you know, joining this team here recently in the last week or so? Um, I normally just like to be a, uh, an offensive defenseman. Um, I like joining the rush. I like uh, moving the puck up ice. I don't like spending too much time in my own zone. Um, <laughs> But just being here, you know, uh, when I got here, things weren't going so well. So in all the meetings, Teddy just wanted the game to be simple. Get the puck up ice, get a puck in the forward's hands. But don't be afraid to join it. Don't be afraid to jump in and stuff like that. But right now, just keep my game simple. Just giving the puck to the forwards and letting them do the work. What's the experience been like so far for you coming from South Carolina to, to Rockford? Uh, it's, 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 it's a different league. Um, I've been in the AHL before, but... Uh, Jumping up from the coast right now, it's just you have to get your timing back down. Everything happens faster up here. The guys are stronger. It's just it's better hockey, so you just got to get that all back down. The Ice Hogs affiliate, Toledo Walleye, we've sent a number of players to Toledo and back this year. It seems like the, the common factor that everyone says the biggest difference is between the AHL and the ECHL is the decision-making and, and that one extra pass that they won't make in the AHL, it's much quicker passing than it would be in the ECHL guys holding onto the puck a little bit more. For sure, uh, the passes are cleaner, they're more crisp, they're, they're on the tape more often. Um, everything just happens faster up here. You have to be faster with your mind up here, and that's the biggest difference. Does it make an additional challenge for you, or do you kind of look at that and say, I'm playing with more skilled players, I should be more skilled as well? Yeah, I mean, you jump in that mindset right away. Um, you're playing with better players, so you got to be better, and it just happens that way. I mean, a hockey player is a hockey player. You're not going to change. Just got to adapt your game, and everyone can do it, so you just go with it. The Ice Hogs have not lost a game since you signed your professional tryout contract. Do you know that? I do, and I don't think that, that has anything to do with me. Um, you could be the lucky charm that this team has needed all season long. When I got here, uh, like I said, things seemed like they weren't going well. Uh, we had meetings a lot, and every meeting I was <laughs> meetings in are no good. was not good. Um, uh, Teddy just wanted the team to simplify the game, and I think we've done a good job of that, just getting the puck up ice, getting the puck in the other end, and just, just playing in the other team's end, not our end. You were playing for the South Carolina Stingrays of the ECHL. A few days before you came here to Rockford, you were named the team captain, 24-year-old team captain. And then next thing you know, sorry guys, I'm going up to Rockford. Yeah, it's funny how that worked. It was more like I got named captain and then all the HL teams knew I was playing in the coast <laughs> or something. Um, no, that was a big honor. Uh, I like being the vocal guy. I like being the guy on the ice in all different situations, the guy that the team leads on. And uh, I'm just honored that they, that they picked me to be their captain. Big difference between the cities of Rockford and Charleston, South Carolina. Surely the weather is a little bit different. Yeah, it's a lot different. Uh, the weather is the biggest thing. Um, I've not been in a cold winter in my pro career at all. I've been in nice cities and nice warm cities. It's, uh, it's, it's very different. And that, going through you know, the teams that you've played for in your professional career, Florida with the uh, Everblades that's in Naples, Florida, or somewhere down there, vacation land. Norfolk, Virginia, not, not a bad place on the coast there. You just came from South Carolina. So far, so good weather-wise. Now you're up here in the middle of the Midwest in mid-February. Yeah, Stinker. I didn't think I could handle an, another cold winter again. I'm from Buffalo, but I've not been in a cold winter in the last five years. So this is... You get used to that warm weather, and then you kind of get southernized. Yeah, this is very cold. <laughs> and this is actually not very cold for Rockford this time of the year, or I guess for the Illinois area, Midwest in general. Oh, it's cold. <laughs> Six more inches of snow coming, yeah. So tomorrow, I think, or when this airs, we could be getting piled on with snow. Not looking forward to it. Not looking forward to it. But... You'll get used to it, hopefully. Uh, now, naming, being named captain of the Stingrays, what's the contract situation like for you? You're on a PTO here with Rockford, but you still have the rights in the ECHL with San, uh, South Carolina. Yeah, they still have my rights. Um, I'm still under contract with them. Like you said, this is just a tryout. Uh, I could be released today or tomorrow or next week sometime, and I would just go right back down to them. Um, they still have my rights. The, uh, the question that we have for you from Twitter, how do you deal with moving? or adjusting to a new city. We asked this to, to Baudouin as well, and now to you. How do you deal with moving in the middle of a season? Uh, it's tough, uh, especially for me. I have no idea how long I'm gonna be here. Um, I was actually on a road trip going to Orlando, 
So I only had a pair of jeans and this shirt with me. So I had to have my wife. This is send, like winter clothing in Orlando. Yeah, I had to have my wife send me up some stuff. And uh, that's probably the biggest thing is my wife's still down there. She's working down there. So it's just, it's tough on her, me not being there and not seeing her and stuff and not knowing when I'm going to be back or how long I'm going to be here. Now, for those who don't know, a professional tryout in the AHL, 25 games, basically, like it says, it's a tryout for you to try to earn yourself that contract. What's your goal here in the near future to try to you know, solidify your spot? Yeah, um, definitely if I'm not going to earn a spot this year, hopefully they keep me in the mind for next year or at least invite me to training camp, let me earn a spot then. That's probably the biggest thing is uh, there's only two months left this year. If I don't get it now, hopefully something happens this offseason or for next year. Now you played as a youngster for the under-17 Team USA, won yourself a gold medal in Slovakia. What was that experience like for you? That was unbelievable. That was probably the, my biggest hockey moment. I mean, I was just a teenager. I was, it wasn't like I was going to an NHL draft yet or anything like that. You were but, still in high school in, in New York, right? Yeah, but uh, putting on your, your country's jersey and playing in a tournament against other countries is just eye-opening, and uh, it was a true honor, and I had a blast doing it. Any highlights of teammates that you played for or guys you played against? Uh, that team had so many golf players on it. I actually played on it with the Yauds, and uh, that's how I got to know him. Okay. But um, we had a good time. It was a lot of fun. What's the uh, situation like with you and the guys here in Rockford? You said you know Yauds. Did you know any of the other players before you came up here? Yeah, to tell the truth, I, I knew a lot of the guys. Um, I know Hazy. Uh, my brother has played hockey with Jeremy Morin and Adam Clendenning, so I know them. Clens and I are from Buffalo. Well, so yeah, both not Buffalo guys. Um, who else? Uh, I played against a lot of these guys before. I, I played with Brookbank in Norfolk. He was actually my D partner. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I knew a bunch of the guys coming here, so it was kind of nice. And going through kind of the course of your career, drafted third round by the Tampa Bay Lightning, that must have been an incredible experience just to hear that name called. Yeah, I was still in high school again, and uh, that was I wasn't expecting to go that high, and um, it was just nice being drafted by a nice southern team. And uh, <laughs> at that time, they were very good. They still are very good, but... Uh, that was nice being drafted, just being recognized. You had a brief stint in Elmira, though, didn't you? At the end of that year, my first year, yeah, I played five. I played games with Augusta early that year in, in the ECHL, so technically I was still eligible for playoffs, but okay. they folded, and uh, Norfolk didn't make playoffs, so they requested that a few of us come play for them, and we did, and that was my first pro playoff experience. Now, after the one year of college, whirlwind of a year for you, I'm sure, you went from ECHL, AHL, and then made your NHL debut all in one season in 08-09. Yeah, that was crazy. Like I said, I started out in Augusta, um, got called up back to Norfolk uh, end of November because the team was folding. Uh, Norfolk was struggling that year, and um, when I came up, again, just kept my game simple. Uh, beat, I was a little bit offensive, but just really simplified. Uh, played well, and then I made my debut in January, and that was... Unbelievable. Um, just was Eiserman there when when? Uh... No, that was uh, Brian Lawton. Okay. And uh, the coach was Rick Tockett, and um, that was out in San Jose, my first game, and we got beat seven one. Um, Not so good. Yeah, it wasn't a good night, but uh, it was awesome. Describe that feeling of stepping out onto the ice for the first time, playing against the San Jose Sharks. You're making your NHL debut. You were 20 years old. 21. 20 and. Uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, I guess when you see those movies where the guy's really nervous and he's always shaking the locker room, that was pretty much me <laughs> before the game. Um, I couldn't believe it. Going out for warm-ups, just looking across the ice, and you see Marlo, Thornton, Boyle, who's my idol, uh, all these guys, and it's just you're playing against them tonight, and then you're in your own locker room, and you're next to St. Louis and Le Cavier and Stamkos. Stamkos is here, yeah. It was just words don't describe it. What was it like being in the same locker room as those guys? How much did you try to pick their brains, or did you just kind of try to be that guy sitting in the corner and just watching? <laughs> yeah, I was watching. I, I wasn't talking much. I knew a few of the guys. There were a few guys up from Norfolk, and I knew a few from playing against them and with them. But uh, I was a quiet guy back then and just watching a lot. Mark Recchi was on that Tampa Bay team as well. Was he there when, when you got your little stint? Yeah, Mark Recchi and Gary Roberts, two very old, intelligent hockey players, and uh, those guys are incredible. A lot incredible. of games, NHL games, under those belts. Yeah. Must have been obviously great just to watch that work ethic and, and see how they go about their business. Yeah, they're two incredible human beings. To be able to play hockey that long and to see them in such great shape is, is, is remarkable, especially Gary Roberts. I don't know what that guy does, but whatever he's doing, it works. 5-0 and with the Ice Hawks, as far as since you've been signed. You've got a bit of a history recently, especially, of playing on some, on some winning teams. 
last year in Florida, you won the uh, the Kelly Cup in the ECHL, right? Yeah, that was a remarkable team too. Um, same situation as it, as here. Uh, both teams have guys that probably shouldn't be in this league. They should be in the league above. And uh, especially last year, our team was so solid. We had two great goalies, a great decor, and our forwards were just lights out, able to score on chances that most teams couldn't. And uh, our playoff record was something like we only lost two games in playoffs, three games. It's not too bad. Yeah, it was it was it was a lot of fun. When you look at guys who who played down in the ECHL and with the lockout this year. What was it like from your perspective with so many roster changes? I don't know how South Carolina was affected, but Toledo, they were scrambling for players because a lot of guys got called up to the AHL after all the guys got called back up to the NHL. Was it a similar situation there in South Carolina? Yeah, um, I think we weren't double affiliated like most teams are. I'm not sure if Toledo is. but uh, Toledo shares with the Red Wings and the Blackhawks. The double affiliated teams got pummeled. Um, they lost half their teams once the lockout ended, and then the other teams, the single affiliate, still lost a lot of guys. And once that happens, the teams are scrambling, calling the SPHL for guys, and then you're calling other leagues for guys. And it's just, we, I mean, we, we uh, in the ECHL, you only play games with 10 forwards and 60. Some games we were playing with eight forwards and 5D. Wow. I mean, it's it's not easy. It's it's a grind in that league, and uh, it the the lockout ending definitely affected us. Now you're. Your southern hockey, I guess you've been in the south so much. Off the ice, do you? I'm assuming you have to play a lot of golf. I don't play a lot, but I do golf when I can, and uh, it's very nice. <laughs> Are you any good? I'm okay, uh, hit or miss. So what does what does Kevin Quick do off the ice to, to pass the time? A lot of downtime in hockey. Um, I have a dog that I spend a lot of outside time with. Um, my wife and I like to to travel the city and walk around and see the history, especially Charleston. There's so much history down there that. You can do something different every day, go see something different, and you're amazed. Uh, there's a lot of plantations, there's a lot of old buildings downtown, things like that. Uh, growing up in Buffalo, obviously you mentioned the New York guys. I think Clint Denning was officially born in Niagara Falls, but he's a Buffalo guy, more than a Buffalo guy. Are you a Sabres fan? Oh, yeah. Big time? Watching Hasek as a kid? Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a rough year so far, though. Lindy Ruff, I was shocked to see that. I mean, they've been struggling, but man. He was I was there since I was in second grade. I was shocked, but I was surprised that he was there that long to really? begin with. I mean, uh, for any coach even, if you win or don't win, I mean, especially he hasn't won anything for us. He, I mean, he brought us to a finals once, but especially not to win and be there for 16 years, I think that might be the longest in history. I mean, uh, that was shocking, but to see, him fi to see them fire him, yeah, that was a big shot to Buffalo, and uh, I'm not sure if a lot of people are happy with it or not happy with it. it it'll... It's still to be determined. Yeah, I was, I was really shocked to see him. Obviously, the, the results haven't been there for them recently, but uh, you associate Lindy Ruff with the Buffalo Sabres, and just to have that kind of connection cut off was just really weird to see. Yeah, it was a big shocker. What about uh, any other sports maybe that uh, you grew up watching? Are you a, a Bills fan? I know that, that hasn't been so great for you guys either. I don't think Buffalo people say you're Bills fans, but that's the only team you do root for. Okay. Uh, I do hate the Patriots, and I do hate the Jets, Good. but uh, yeah, I'm a Bills fan. Are, did you watch them like a lot growing up? Did you play any other sports? Did you get into football or, or uh, when you were a kid? Played a little bit of football. I played more baseball growing up. Played that up to when I was in high school. Um, and yeah, I watched the Bills through a lot of things. Uh, the wide right, the Jim Kelly days. Yeah, I saw them a lot. You still keep tabs on team and still a big fan? Oh, yeah. Good. Marshawn Lynch, Beast Mode? Oh, yeah. That should be your nickname. <laughs> it's, it's better than Quickie. <laughs> I don't know about I don't, I don't know. All right, so we, we were in the office talking about what we were talking to Kevin Quick about here on Hog Talk. So we came up with Quick Fire. So we're going to ask you some rapid fire questions here to end the segment. All right. Is that all right with you? Sure. All right. Number one, favorite food? Chicken parm. Chicken parm. That's a common answer among hockey players. I can eat it every day and I love it. I don't know. Good enough. Favorite musician? Uh, Eric Church. Okay. Favorite movie? Shooter. This, there is a right answer. Shooter. Shooter. With Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg's my favorite, and that movie is unreal. What's your top three? Uh, Tough question, I know. There's so many good movies. Um, recently, I'd have to go with The Dark Knight Rises was really good. Uh, I'll throw in a funny one. Let's see. Uh, 21 Jump Street was a very, good movie. Very underrated movie. The, the remake was funny, I agree. And... Uh, we, we can leave it at that. There's, yeah, there's three good. good movies. So yeah. go watch those. Kevin Quick watched them. So go watch those as well. 
Favorite hockey team, we already talked about that, Buffalo Sabres. Favorite color? Blue. Favorite non-hockey team? Non-hockey team. So any sport other than hockey? Yeah, Patriots for sure. I hate the Patriots. No, your favorite, not least favorite. <laughs> oh, favorite? Yeah. Uh, I guess outside the Bills. Yankees. Your basketball fan? Yankees. Yankees. Oh, I can't roll with that. I'm sorry. Favorite vacation spot? Mexico. Solid choice. And last one, the, the kicker. If you had a superpower, what would it be? Uh, be able to fly. Be able to fly. Good answer. Good show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Best of luck to you the rest of the year. Give it up for Kevin Quick. Hopefully he can stick around here with the Ice Hogs the rest of the season, if not next season, like you said. That was all the time we have this week on Bud Light Hog Talk. Thanks for tuning in right here on 23210 TV. We're here every Monday the rest of the season.